Most of us here, at one time or another, are searching for balance in our life. Balance work, life, money, relationships. My goal is I want to spend as much time there in the winter and not in our Vancouver winter. So when I started going over there and being part of that, I realized that in order for me to get there, I either needed to win the lottery or I needed to find a way. I would coach, so I found other people that would come to Hawaii pay me to teach them to paddle in the waters that I like being in. As time went on, they got more and more, so I was spending up to three months there, and it was a balance, and it was, it was great, it was, felt successful, but then I wanted more. I wanted to start building the boats. I wanted to be involved in every aspect of this wonderful sport. But what it really was for me when I was out there was finding that balance was giving back, was I was able to, to do the sport that I loved, excel at it, race at it, just playing it. And I was able to share that with others and enrich them and able to get them somewhere that they couldn't ever do on their own. I was able to help them set vacations and memories of a lifetime. So when I'm building canoes, every boat does probably have a little bit of blood and sweat in it. But I'm really excited because I know that these canoes going around the world are allowing people to achieve their dreams. And out on the water, the balance of life is there. There's a balance for you to stay out of the water, and there's the balance for you to appreciate where you are. So I've been able to inspire teams to race around the world, and I've paddled continents, and it's, it's been great. But there's a couple of small stories I want to tell that sort of really encompass you know, what, I, what I like. And my first story is what I really enjoy about paddling was getting up at a race start uh, in Hawaii Kai in o Oahu, and they see a guy carrying a boat down It says, powered by Jesus on the side. Not a religious man, I kind of giggle. I'm like, all right, whatever helps. But the balance came back. We were coming around, the wind had picked up, and we were, I was running a little bit behind in the field, and I decided I'm going to cut the corner around the diamond head in Oahu. And over to my left was a boat that said, powered by Jesus. And I was way too far inside the break, and there were, it's called the death line. Things much bigger and taller than me are coming down. I look over at him, I'm about a half length in front of him, and I'm like, well, if he can make it, somebody's looking out for him. I'm gonna be okay. Two seconds later, he's in the water, completely destroyed. And I'm scared. And uh, so I just go, luckily, what ate him, I was able to get on and run it and surf the backside of waves out of danger for a couple hundred meters. Two weeks later, the same spot, I figured, hey, I, I made it last time. This time, not so lucky. I got eaten at the same spot, tumbled, rolled, seat comes off. The only thing left I had to finish the race on the top of the seat was one little piece of plastic that used to be where the seat was. So one cheek on one side, one cheek on the other for 10 kilometers up Waikiki Beach. It was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> up here on the photo, this is Many, there's many types of craft. This is the six-man crossing from Molokai to Oahu, and I've been able to paddle from different islands across Hawaii, from Big Island to Malakai, Molokai, to Oahu, Oahu, um, or, and around. So whether we're doing water changes in the middle of the Pacific, or whether we're doing solo races, trying not to get eaten by bigger waves, there's always that balance, that balance of trust of your crew, the balance of of trust in yourself that you're gonna be able to outrun that wave that sounds really big and gnarly behind you. And I decided um, that I would paddle across from, uh, from Vancouver to Nanaimo because I'm stubborn and I was tired of spending two thirds of my long weekends on the ferry. I figured it's faster for me to paddle across. And it was. 
the hard part was shortly into this, my partner decided, says it's too rough, he turns back. I still thought it was, it was a good condition day, and I head off, and I feel like I got a, my iPhone, I have a GPS and a VHF radio, I'm, I'm good to go. I phoned my fiance at the time, and I said, I think you're sailing across, try and find me. I'm in a 21-foot canoe, blue, in the middle of the Georgia Strait on Thanksgiving weekend. Um, the only thing I saw for hours was a Coast Guard boat really far away that I hope I never needed, and an occasional plane flying overhead. Partway through, when my, my, my partner turned back, I went back to shore with him, and I, I, I went back and I continued on, probably wasn't a, a wise move. Um, but then I lost my water system, and then cell phone cut out. And right after I'd made my last VHF radio call to the, to the sailboat, hopefully that they'd found me, as I was paddling along, I hit it, and over my shoulder it goes, and before I could even stop, it sinks to the bottom. So I've lost all my communication, all my navigation, and I'm just looking somewhere on Vancouver Island. Hopefully I'm heading for Gabriel La Paz. Sailboat finally catches up to me. Don't know how they found me. And uh, spent the next two hours with a much safer line because I wasn't going to Gabriel La Paz. I was actually probably heading more towards Sydney, and it would have been a much longer adventure. Partway through, it was cold, and I was going through, and um, just had to keep fighting. Was, there's nowhere to go. And when you're out in some of these channels, this is probably the only photo. Um, when you're out there in the middle, that's a broken part. Um, when you're out there in the middle, you, there's no off. You can't get off the bus. You can't go, I don't like it. So you got to be mentally, and you're prepared to go through, even when things are wrong. I was so tired because I, I, I lost my water system, I was dehydrating, and every time I'd try and do a stroke, I'd have to shake my hands free so I could grab the paddle again and do another 10, 15 strokes. Finally went through, got to the other side, and I figured I had a little bit left to get through Gabriola Pass, and that wasn't gonna happen. But landed just at, at it in just under six hours, and I figured the ferry usually takes me about seven to Gabriola Pass, and I saved about $90. So I, I figured it was an advantage. <laughs> 24 hours ago, I was right here, and I flew back uh, to be here with you guys, and, and Sean, when he asked me, I said, I think he got the wrong guy. I'm pretty casual. I don't think I do anything that extraordinary. I think you've heard that a few times today. And uh, what I said to him is I said, well, if I can come up here and I can inspire anybody to take a challenge, push that little level of their balance in life and try something new, then I feel like I've succeeded. Ryan Pogue, everybody.